Okay, so I've spent most of my working life getting paid to hang out with people. Okay, uh, I, for some of you that might sound a little bit shady, but uh, you know, I am an anthropologist, so that's what I do. I love human behavior, right? I love what makes us all tick, how everyday culture shapes who we are, the social networks that we form, the people that we hang out with, the politics that we follow, the brands that we consume how everyday culture shapes who we are. So this is me hanging out in the surgical theater, understanding how different departments and different teams work together to look at innovation opportunities. And this is me on a building site in London, understanding how different work people interact with different brands. So as you can see, I love to dress up. <laughs> But I'm not here to talk about my fashion sense. I'm here to talk about everyday culture and why we tend to not really get it. And to do this, I'm going to introduce two types of mindsets. The first one's called a bad culture mindset and the second one is a good culture mindset. So for the last 20 years or so, I've been working with global brands and global organizations and I just realized that what they do, they just don't really understand what culture is. What they do is kind of reduce it down to a set of basic principles that feel easy to manage. This is a bad culture mindset. A bad culture mindset is based on really kind of fancy mission statements, dressed up value systems. They sound cool, but, but really do they actually reflect the internal and external worlds they're trying to com um, com communicate to? A bad culture mindset is ideological. It tries to create a desired painting of what we really want it to be. It's <laughs> deluded. Okay, and my selfie stick was working overtime here. <laughs> I'm just, just so, you, so you know. But if, well, what, I mean, what is the cause of us adopting then a bad culture mindset? Why is it our go-to mindset? <laughs> The reason is because culture is complex. Culture is not easy to decode, but we need to be decoding it all the time. Okay, culture is also messy. It's complex and messy, but the important thing about mess is that it tells us what we're trying to order, what we're trying to tidy up, so we know who we are. And this is a really important point. So if culture, or if a bad culture mindset is based on ideology and also based on a sense of fear, well, what is a good culture mindset and kind of how can we start to adopt it into our everyday lives and our workplaces? So um, a good culture mindset understands culture as an ecosystem with many different parts that all interconnect but how these parts all interconnect can differ over time or, or due to a specific incident or event. Some connect better than others, a bit like the organs in our body. But what I really want to do is understand these parts as subcultures, right? So subcultures have different value systems, different rituals, different symbolisms, metaphors. But the key thing here is to understand how they all overlap to create a whole. Culture is not static. Culture has difference within it. So I want to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story about the complexities of everyday culture. And in fact, I'm going to tell you a story about an office door. Okay? This office door formed part of the office in a nursing, or, or a nursing office on a psychiatric ward in a psychiatric hospital in London. Now, I chose to have this as my research site for my PhD in anthropology. I was really interested in how organizational culture worked on a day-to-day -day basis. So what the heck, I chose a psychiatric hospital. What I realized was that this nursing office had a heartbeat. In the daytime, psychiatrists, nurses, social workers, psychologists, patients were in and out. One day, I was sitting in the nursing office having a chat with the nurse in charge, as anthropologists do. We chat a lot. And I wanted to understand their position. What made, them, what made them do their job? What did they enjoy? What were the pain points? 
And what I realized was that this office was theirs. They were boss. Anyone who was in the office had to abide to their rules, their code of conduct, even if that person was more powerful or had more authority. If the door was shut, it represented a private space for confidential meetings. And if it was open, it represented an open wall culture where patients could come in and out at will. And this is something that nurses always strove for. They wanted it to be an open culture. Whilst I was talking to this nurse, a junior psychiatrist came onto the ward and sat down to write some patient's notes. The door was kept open. In a couple of minutes, a patient approached and stood in the doorway and asked the psychiatrist, just very nicely, if they could have some leave off the ward to go to a cafe or go to the park for a couple of hours. The psychiatrist, scribbling away, looked up and explained in a very nice way that they were really busy and had to zoom down to another ward when they were done. Now, the patient was a little bit anxious here because they wanted leave. They wanted to go for a stroll in the park. So they asked again. The psychiatrist then, getting a bit more frustrated, stood up, politely apologized, and shut the door. Imagine the look on the nurse's face. And this is what happened. It is so hard to get anything done if patients are in and out, said the psychiatrist. We keep the door open so patients do not feel excluded. If we need to close the door, we explain nicely to the patient the reason. Right said the psychiatrist, stood up and was about to leave the ward. But before they got to the door, the nurse said, do you mind putting away your notes, please? The psychiatrist did this and then stormed off the ward, went past the patient, the patient there looking like, I'm the one with the problems. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, right. And I look at the nurse and the nurse says to me, I can't believe them. She, the psychiatrist, is such a beep, beep. So disrespectful. But let's think about this. What I understood was actually through understanding the office door as an object, as a cultural signifier, that everyday culture is complex. If we adopted a bad culture mindset here, what we would do is either deny that this conflict existed or we would sweep the mess underneath the carpet because to expose that there is difference would actually expose that the mission statement of the hospital that was promoted everywhere, which said that patient care is designed with the patient at the centre, would be flawed. A good culture mindset, in a way, would maybe see this as two different subcultures. Two different subcultures with different value systems, but still trying to do the best job as possible. Different work pressures, maybe even different societal backgrounds. A good culture mindset would also tell us that design and architecture of the office and the office door also shaped culture. A good culture mindset would also tell us that there were two subcultures unconsciously trying to act and have performances of power and authority. I am in charge here, not you. No, I'm, I'm more powerful than you. I don't care. Okay? Culture is messy. Culture is complex. But unless we are going to be able to decode this, we are not going to have innovative and vibrant organizational cultures. So what is the solution? What can we do? How can we adopt a good culture mindset? Okay, number one, we need to understand that there is complexity. By doing this will allow us to be proactive and reactive to changing cultural trends. Remember what I said, culture is not static. And key to this is leadership. Okay? Being a leader is having the ability to understand how cultural factors shape the behavior of your employees, customers, and service users. My friend and fellow anthropologist Grant McCracken, in his book, The Chief Culture Officer, wrote this. Corporations live or die by their connection to culture. They live or die. That's how important culture is. And I've just proved this. But for leaders, it's also sounding quite abstract, and I understand that. So what can leaders actually do then to start thinking about a good culture mindset? Leaders need to think like anthropologists, right? Because anthropologists like me, we go deep when it comes to culture. The anthropologist called Clifford Gitt developed 
the concept of the thick description that sets out to interpret everyday culture with as much detail as possible from many different vantage points. Okay, doing this exposes many different possibilities. If you've got more possibilities, you've got more spaces for innovation opportunities. But that's dealing with complexity. Okay, so a leader has to be able to read culture, be able to understand what is not being said. We don't read Shakespeare. Or we don't read an article in the New Yorker simply by consuming the words and sentences. What we're doing, we're interpreting the metaphors and symbolisms and contradictions that the author is trying to convey to us. And then we interpret again. Interpretation gives us difference within a culture. Difference is cool because it leads to creativity. So we need to be able to see this. And key for leaders here then is to be able to decode stories. Stories here are the blood vessels of culture. Stories are exchange systems that are working over time within culture. Stories and the, as being a, a sharing process allows me to understand who I am because we are sharing similar codes. They are oozing with cultural codes that preserve our sense of boundaries. Stories are key to a good culture mindset. So what are we going to do as a means of ending this? If we carry on thinking about a bad culture mindset, we're going to be left with ideological mission statements, strategies that are aimless, brand values that are imposed onto the consumer, yet they're not lived out by the organization, innovation processes that are too narrow, new product and service development that will have little trace of the cultural ecosystem of the people that are supposed to use it. So this is what I'm gonna to say to leaders. Before embarking on change programs, or before developing new brand strategies, step back, okay? Step back and say to yourself, what does the office door in my organization or within my team tell me about our culture? Thank you. <laughs>